All right, so I'm going to go over to this folder called Playground, and I'm going to make a new directory called demo, cd into demo, and this directory is going to represent the top level of my project. It's currently empty, because um, I just created it. If I want to turn this into a Git repository, I use the git init command. Git init stands for git initialize, and we see that it says initialized empty git repository in blah, 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 slash dot. I do ls-a, there's a hidden file in this directory called .git. If I do ls.git, there's a bunch of stuff in here. This is the directory on disk where Git stores all of its internal data, namely the objects and the references. And you actually see here objects and refs as two directories in here. And all the repository data will be stored underneath those two directories. One other command to keep in mind as we're going through these is something called git help. Git help takes a subcommand as an argument and gives you some help on it. So if I do git help init, for example, it'll tell me about the git init command. So now, there are some commands for figuring out what's going on with a Git repository. Like, git status at a high level says, what is going on right now? And we see here, let's ignore the first line for now. The second line says no commits yet. That's because we just initialized a fresh repository. And so there is no history yet. I'm actually going to, uh, does anybody still want this or can I clear this part of the board? I'm going to, as we go along, draw how the underlying objects and references data is changing when I type in certain Git commands. So right now, this picture, or lack of picture, represents the current state of our repository. It's empty. There are no snapshots. So let's fix that. Let's add something to our history. Here we have no files. So let me just go ahead and create a file hello.txt with the content hello. Normally, you'd have your source code with actually useful stuff in it. Now, what I want to do is I want to take the current contents of this directory and turn it into a new snapshot to represent, say, the first state my project was in. You might imagine an interface for doing this where there's like a git snapshot command or git something else command, which takes a snapshot of the entire state of the current directory. Uh, for a number of reasons, git doesn't have a command that works exactly like that, because git wants to give you a little bit of flexibility as to what changes to include in the next snapshot you take. This is something that's kind of confusing to beginners sometimes, so I'll uh, try to explain it right now. Git has a concept of something called a staging area, and at a high level, it's a way you tell Git what changes should be included in the next snapshot you take. If we do git status here, we'll see that git says no commits yet, like it said.
said before, and it says untracked files hello.txt. So this is saying that Git notices that there's a new file in the current directory, but it is not going to be included. Included in the next snapshot, Git's kind of ignoring it for now. But if I do git add hello.txt, and if I do git status again, it says now changes to be committed. Text. And so now if I do the git snapshot command, which is actually git commit, which creates any one of those circles I drew on the board over there, this file will be included in that snapshot I, I take. So let me go ahead and run git commit. What this does is is it pops up my text editor and it lets me type in a message that will be associated with this commit. 
And it's really good to write high quality commit messages because then later when you're looking back at your product's version history, you'll know why you made certain changes. Um, I'm going to add this relatively useless commit message. But we have a link in the lecture notes for a guide on how to write high quality commit messages. So now that I've done that, Git prints out some output. Uh, master, ignore that bit for now. This thing is the hash of the commit I just created. So now I have in my history a single node. This has in it a tree that has a single blob, a single file, hello.txt, with the contents hello world. And then hash 42fb something, something, something. It's actually truncated in the Git interface as well. This is just printing out my commit message again. And it says, as a reminder, I just added hello.txt. And so now if I use the git log command, so the git log command is really useful in that it helps you visualize the history, the, the commit graph. If I do, question? The hash post 42f number, is that for the entire tree or just for the function below? Question? The hash post 42f number, is that for the entire tree or just for the function below? That's a great question. So the question is, what exactly does this hash correspond to? So this is the hash of the commit. The commit contains inside of it the hash of the tree along with whatever other information. So I can actually use uh, git cat file dash p this number. This is kind of like a git internals command that will print out the contents of this commit. So you can see this kind of maps to that data structure. Es el nombre, el identificador del commit. 